Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Uncle Matt's Cookery Lessons. There's a recipe for rosso. It's a Polish soup. Okay, let's crack on with this rather simple but uh, very delicious Polish broth. Uh, it's a chicken broth. I've decided to use some chicken legs and some chunky kind of mirepoix vegetables all going in the pot. We're going to cover that with water. Didn't put the amount of water on the recipe but I've used three litres there. That's going to go on the stove and that is going to simmer away. Um, you want to simmer for at least a couple of hours. You're going to skim while you're going. But I'm, while it's on the stove now, gently warming up, I'm going to make pasta basically. Well, this is, these are the noodles that go with it. Now, I've been trying to find some recipes for this exact type of noodle dough, and I couldn't find any. So I had a quick chat with my lady, who is Polish, and so she explained to me pretty much what you do. So I've got some strong flour on the board there, one egg, about one tablespoon, approximately, of cold water, but you could add more. In the end, I'm not going to use all of this flour. Um, if you've ever seen this method before, you make a well uh, with dam, basically, so the liquid can't escape, and you try to just scratch in the flour from inside into it, form kind of like a slurry there. As it gets thicker, you can get a bit more confident and not worry about it breaking the dam. By all means, chuck the ingredients in a bowl and mix it up. You might need to add a bit more liquid. To it but there we go let's just speed through that there very pleased it's looking incredibly messy and sticky at this stage but we're just going to persevere we're going to keep working this the plan is with this method is this is sort of like the grandmother method of making pasta um, without really measuring you just keep going until the pasta is ready and whatever flour is left over is that flour is left over Right, so, um, I had this soup a couple of times recently because I was in Poland with my lovely fiance and some of her extended family for the new year. Visited mum and dad-in-law, had a few days there and there was a 70th birth, uh, birthday party and this soup was one of the courses, one of about a thousand courses, all accompanied with shots of vodka, beer and just basically just, they don't stop this pulse, they're, they're mad, they just keep drinking and eating fantastic and just when you think everything's had every all the food's gone because you've had pudding they bring out more soup crazy anyway a wonderful time and i thought to myself i'm going to recreate a couple of the dishes i had and this is the first of them so speeding this process up a bit i'm working away at this pasta dough for up to sort of eight to ten minutes get it nice and smooth in between times keep your eye on your broth you don't want it to uh, have that fatty stuff sitting on the surface that will make it cloudy you want to try to get this as clear as possible we're not going to be too pedantic we're not making a consomme but you know, nice and clear is definitely the way forwards and there we go this dough is very much taking shape now it's beginning to have that getting the outside a little bit smoother and we'll be there and if you want to see a very very nice YouTube channel about pasta, check out Pasta Grannies. Invaluable. I've learned a lot from watching that. Okay, happy with that. I'm just covering it because I'm going to work it later on the board. So there's no point in putting it away in the fridge. We'll just leave that for about 10 minutes or so. And we'll just go back to my broth now. This has had about half an hour at this stage, and I thought I'm going to put in some of the parsley, more of the stalks, and I saved most of the leaves for going in the soup later. And that dough has had a 10 minute rest, let the glutens relax, apparently, something like that, some science happens. And let's roll it out with my new rolling pin. Isn't it nice? Only a fiver in Sainsbury's, brilliant. Anyway, so working this pasta, rolling, rolling, and rolling, pick it up when you have to. 
I got into a little bit of bother with the flour because it had all bits of dough in it, so in a minute I'm just going to clear away a lot of that old flour. Put it back down there and we'll just get my little sprinkler out. And just keep working. I'm taking this down to approximately one millimeter. If you pick it up to a light, hopefully you'll be able to sort of see the light coming through it. That is a good sign. There you go, I'm trying to show you there. That is about one millimeter. Now I want to cut this into noodles, that, so I've got to break this down into smaller amounts. Bit of flour on them, this stops them sticking together, and roll that up. And repeat with the other parts there. It usually is a noodle in this soup, although I have seen, because I've done a bit of research, I've seen a few recipes where people just use like macaroni, things like that. So you can use as much of this technique as you like. You can just buy your pasta if you fancy, it doesn't matter. But I wanted to do the whole thing. There we go, so you roll it up with the flour and you're slicing it. Don't just squash because you'll squeeze the, the dough together into a lump. So slice all your way through all of the pasta separate it now there you go nice almost like spaghetti but well, nothing like spaghetti and I'm going to boil it and then I've got a bit of water ready with ice in it to refresh the pasta nice bit of salt in the water never do pasta in water that is not been salted that would be rude and that, because it was fresh, only needed, there you go, screen, about two minutes to be cooked. But taste it. Take a piece, break it off. Is it nice? If it's nice, it is ready. That is ready. So strain it off into the ice water. Or you can always put that in the um, in a colander under the running tap. But just be careful that the running tap and cold water isn't too violent, because it will break it up. And there you go. Just showing you a bit there. Isn't that nice? I'm very pleased with myself. I haven't actually made pasta for a very long time, so. And here we go, that is about two hours. Now I've seen on the Wikipedia, it says traditionally this would be done for about six hours. Now this is the quandary I get to, because I can't take out the British chef in me, even though I'm trying to recreate a traditional Polish dish, and I want the chicken flesh to still taste of chicken and not just taste of like meh. So I'm thinking, this is the point where I'm going to stop. Feel free to keep going and top it up with water until there's literally just nothing left in that chicken. Otherwise, it looks nice, but it will just taste nasty of nothing. So that's probably where I've made a slight mistake. I've definitely strayed away from the, the full traditional rosso. Sorry for my pronunciation. I've used a bit of cheesecloth or muslin cloth inside a fine mesh chinois to try to get out all the horrible little bits and there we go we've got a lovely nice clear broth it's not a consomme but it's very clear season to taste with salt and pepper I'm using white pepper at this stage because I wanted to sort of keep it looking clear I've reserved the carrots this is very traditional you can cut them just into coin like they were most of the time in my way but I thought no I'll do them it's a little little mini triangles like this the French would call that paysan, but that's just a fancy French name for chopped up into particular shapes. And this is me reserving the chicken. Now, they do serve the chicken with this, and that's why I've done it this way. So that chicken actually still tastes quite nice and juicy, like chicken. Um, some of the stuff we had when Ray didn't. <laughs> no offence. And here we go, right. In a bowl, select a bowl of your choice. Don't worry about reboiling the pasta, just pop it in. The broth is going to be nice and hot. It's going to warm everything up. Bit of the carrot, bit of parsley, bit of the noodles, and on top with the broth. And you can taste, and you can add a bit more seasoning. But that is it. That is a very, very simple, but delicious, traditional Polish broth called rosol. I've got it wrong. Three times I've probably said it differently. Final bit of seasoning, and then time to eat. Now, I thought I made another mistake because I thought the noodles are too long because it's actually really hard to eat, but apparently that's normal. You're supposed to get hot noodles slapped all down your chin when you get it in, and you'll see in a minute. But um, pretty much that's it. Thank you very much for watching this episode of Uncle Matt's Cookery Lessons. Hope you like this one, and check out in the future. They will do, uh, over the next uh, few weeks, some more Polish dishes. And uh, yeah, I hope you find it interesting. Anyway, I will catch you in the next video coming really soon. Bye.